Hi everyone, welcome to another video of problem solving using data structures and algorithms. In this video, we'll talk about queues uh, and decks and especially queue related problems. Okay, so the problem that I'm looking at is to implement a queue using two stacks. And why did I choose this problem? Uh, reason being that you should be able to review your current knowledge of stacks and queues once you implement this. That's the whole point of bringing this problem and putting things together. Okay. So again, we'll follow our design template in which we uh, can begin with either the constraints and then the ideas and then the complexity and finally to code and tests. Okay, so the idea here is to implement a queue using stacks. So obviously the first thing that comes to my mind is what is a stack? If you remember, this is what a stack looks like. First element, second element, third element. This is how we push things. And then when, when once we start taking them out or popping them out, it is three, two, one. So the principle that apply, applies here is last in, first out. The element that was last in comes first out. In case of a queue, let's say this was the first element, the second element, the third element, and then the order in which they come out is again going to be one, two, three. So that order stays the same, which means first in, first out, right? So somehow we have to uh, do something with this kind of a structure so that we arrive at this. And how will we do that? Uh, it has to do with the sequence of elements that are pushed on a stack, right? And the sequence is reversed when we pop them. So we have to do something uh, with a stack so that it forms this kind of a structure. So how about putting two stacks together instead of just one, right? So what will happen is if I have two stacks together and the whole idea is that when we start pushing the elements, it's, it's similar in both Right? So when we start pushing the elements, it's same in stack as it is in queue. But the, the issue uh, is the DQ part when we start popping the elements out. Right? So how about we have two stacks put together such that I start pushing elements in one of them. Right? And then when I start popping from this is the first stack and this is the second stack. Right? So when I start popping from this one, I'll start pushing in this one. Right? And obviously when I start, so this is going to be one, two, three, right? So this is going to be three, two, one. But the order in which I pushed the elements here was one, two, three. So I want them to be out as one, two, three, right? So once I start popping these out, these are again going to be one, two, three. So this is the fundamental idea where we can put together two stacks and eventually build a queue. Okay, so this is the idea. So I have an idea of what I should do. I should build uh, essentially two stacks, one and two, and then push into one and pop. Whenever I pop, I have to push into the other one. And then eventually for the overall queue, I should pop the second one, right? Okay, in terms of constraints and complexity, uh, we can use the implementation of stacks. So one of the videos where I talk about stacks, all the operations will be the same complexity. So you can go over them. And complexity, as I said, of each operation is going to be same. Uh, this is the constraint, actually, the first one that we are using our already existing implementation of stack. So you should know how to implement the different uh, aspects of stack and how to create a stack yourself, right? So now assuming that I have that stack. So that's the constraint or the assumption. The assumption in our problem is that I have the stack, right? I have the stack already. And using that, I'm going to create my queue. Fine, let's go to Spider and see how we can implement it. Uh, a quick review of the class array stack that we implemented earlier. And again, I've provided the code in the description below. So this, this is something that we've created in one of the previous videos. It has these functionalities. It checks whether the stack is empty or not. Push, pop, uh, finds the topmost element, and then finds the size of your stack. Now I'm going to import that in another script here. So I've imported that here. And now I've built this new class that I'm calling Q from stack, right? As I said in the description earlier, I'm going to create instances of my array stack class. So notice the name, it's array stack, and I've created an instance of that here, right? So this is the init part. We are familiar with this because this is the solution that we thought of. Now comes the NQ and the DQ part. Now going back to the picture that we made, the NQ is going to be similar to what we've been doing and the NQ will happen in the first stack. 
Now my first stack is this in stack, right? And my second stack is out stack. That's why I created two instances of that, right? Now in my NQ, all I'll do is I'll add or push an element in my in stack because this is the first stack that I'm going to build. And then whenever I NQ, I don't have to do anything, just keep pushing. Now the DQ is a little, or I would say slightly more complex because I will check if my out stack is empty or not. If it is empty, then what I'll do is I'll start putting the elements of my in stack or the first stack, right, into this one. So all I have to do is keep pushing whatever elements are being popped from my first stack. This is what we thought of here, right? Whatever elements are being, are being popped from my first stack should be pushed into my second stack. That's exactly what I'm doing here, right? Self dot in stack dot pop. And then finally return that out stack, right? So this will be more like a queue. So in order to test that, I'll create an instance of my queue from stack class, right? And I'll push certain things in it. So push is, is okay, that that's like the NQ part. And then I'm going to do a DQ and see whether the DQ works just like it should in a queue. So remember what happens in a queue if I'm pushing like, for instance here, I'm pushing the elements 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. When I DQ, they should be in that order only. That order is important, right? Just like here, I think I ran it one more. Let, let me run it again here. So as you can see yeah, here, it returns in the same order. So this is following the principle of first in, first out, because you can tell here, uh, when I pushed the elements using the dot NQ method, I pushed in this order, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's the same order in which it comes out. So using a stack, right, using a stack class that I implemented earlier, I have implemented a queue. Okay, so this was problem number one. Problem number two, just like before, is something that you can think of, simulate the game of hot potato. Uh, hot potato, I think you must be familiar with. Children line up in a circle and pass an item from neighbor to neighbor as fast as they can. And based on a certain number at a certain point in the game, the action is stopped and the child who has the item is removed from the circle. So one way of thinking about it is that you can have like names of people, like let's say the names are some, I don't know, some random. And they are, they are uh, lined up in, in or sorry, they, they are arranged rather in this order, right? So let's say you have these people and like, let's say the, the person uh, from where we begin is A and then there is some integer, let's say two or three. After every three pers people, that, that, that person is eliminated. So one, two, three, or maybe you start counting from zero and this person is eliminated and so on, right? So and, and, uh, a queue implementation of this uh, problem can be a really good exercise for you to practice all your knowledge about queues, uh, decks, and uh, stacks. So with this, I end this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. Uh, thank you.